Hi everyone, my name is Jesus Rodriguez and we are in Chavista Chronicles from Caracas. We have today the pleasure of uh, interviewing Joe M. S. Berger. I'm very honored to have him because he is uh, the most uh, the, I believe that he is the best English speaker writer about political events in Ecuador that I know. And today that we are almost one week uh, ahead of the second round in the presidential elections in Ecuador, uh, I believe that it's important to talk with him. So I first will introduce you, Joel Emerson, who is a writer with Ecuadorian roots who is based in Canada. His work has appeared in Fair, in Teletour English, Vnet, and Counterpunch, and many other websites around there. I'm gonna ask him like uh, four questions, but before the first question, Joe, I'm gonna mention, I, I just want to refresh the, the, the results of the first round uh, in order for the people to, to be aware of that. I mean, in the first round, Andres Arauz got 32% of the votes, almost 33 according to what I found in Wikipedia, which might be tricky. But anyway, you correct me if I'm wrong, Guillermo Lasso uh, got in second place uh, uh, with 19.74% uh, of the votes. Jacob Perez got 19.39. And Xavier Gervas on the Democratic left, not, not too many people talk about him, got like 15.68% of the votes. And that interests me, and I believe that one of the questions that I have uh, is based on on, on on him. And also, I believe that it's important to mention how the the parliament, the, the Congress in Ecuador, results were. So Union, Union for Hope, which is the party of Arauz, got 32% uh, of the of the of the parliament. Pachacuti got in second place with 16.81. Democratic left, which is the party from the guy that got in, in, in fourth place, uh, uh, got 11.98% uh, of the votes. And the Social Christian Party, which is the party of Lasso, if I'm not wrong, uh, got 9.73%. Uh, and Creo also uh, is a party from Lasso got a 9.63%. Uh, so I, I just wanted to, to refresh those numbers in order for people to know exactly what they uh, next on the, not this one, the next one on in Ecuador. So my third question, Joe, uh, how do you see at this moment the perspective uh, from Andres Arau to be in the second round? in Ecuador. Welcome. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Jesus. Thank you for having me on. Thank you for the invitation. Um, Address Arouse right now has, if there's analysis that just came out of all the, the approved, let's say the reputable pollsters for want of a better word. And right now he seems to have on average about a five point lead. You know, some are more, some are less, but on average he's got about a five point lead over Lasso going into the second round, which is, will be on uh, April 11th. So he's looking, he's looking good. I mean, not, not great, but he's, he's come down a bit in the last few weeks because uh, I think Lasso has, has put him a little bit rouse on the defensive by spreading lies, basically, that, um, that, he, had, that he had worked for Moreno um, uh, these past four years. And uh, it's, it's, it's a lie, but he's, he's managed, it's, uh, he's forced rouse into a situation where he's had to explain it. So uh, I think that's brought the I think that's brought the lead down for a rouse a bit, um, you know, because when you're having to go on the defensive, then you're not talking about your positive proposals. You're not talking a you're not talking a way that excites people. You're 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 the one who's on the defensive that weakens you, you know. And uh, you know, Moreno, uh, I guess everyone should know he he took power in 2017, promising to be uh, a, a Creole. Uh, loyalist, the continuation of the basic political project of Rafael Correa, who was in office for, for 10 years, led a very left-wing government that you know, decreased poverty, improved infrastructure, uh, you know, 
uh, kicked out the Americans uh, out of uh, a base they had in the province of Manta. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, Moreno came in and basically overnight, as soon as he took office, he went completely to the to become the worst enemy of the political project that, got, that put him in power. I, I guess uh, a figure you might think of that's comparable that people might know is Luis Almagro with the OAS, you know, who, who came in as a leftist and then the next thing you know, he's, he's, he's the more extreme than any right winger. I mean, that's kind of what Moreno did in Ecuador. So, um, and, and Moreno now is, is so unpopular that even though he basically Im Im uh, implemented Lasso's right wing program, uh, throughout the campaign, Lasso has, has been, again, have forced to lie and deny that that's been the case. Um, and 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 with this lie that that he's been spreading that Arouse, oh no, Arouse actually worked for Moreno. Again, nobody wants to own the last four years of Moreno because they've been what, what what that means that 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 Arouse worked for Moreno exactly. Okay, this is what happened. Uh, since uh, the year two thousand six, um, uh, Arouse has been technically an employee of the central bank. But uh, you know, uh, under under Correa, he elevated him to a minister, various positions in the ministry. But he was also basically always part of Correa's um, economic team, and he, and he made him a minister in that. Now, when when Correa left office in 2017, Arauz left Ecuador, but he, he remained officially uh, uh, an official with the central bank. So what he did was he took a leave without pay to go to Mexico. <laughs> And they didn't even pay for his way to Mexico. They didn't pay his studies. They didn't pay anything. So he's he's officially on leave without pay in Mexico doing his doctorate. So it's not unusual. They implemented a program in Ecuador where officials with you know public uh, institutions like the central bank yeah, they can go abroad. Yeah, go abroad uh, without pay, do their studies, and then come back and still have a job. And in fact, Arroz had a, had to basically to do that. They had to say, okay, you can do that, but you have to promise to work for the central bank for at least 12 years after you finish your doctorate. So he did that. But during this whole time that he's working on his doctorate, I did interviews with him. Lots of other alternative people did interviews with him. And he was a very strong critic of Moreno's government. And he wrote a blog. He had a blog where he's always criticizing Moreno's government. So by 2020, what they did was they actually uh, said, you know what? Uh, we're, we're firing you, basically. And... Arroz objected to his dismissal, you know, formally complained about his dismissal. Um, and so they said, no, you're dismissed. And here we're giving you, a, like, they gave him like $20,000 or something for a severance pay. So, which he didn't ask for. I mean, they gave it to him because they fired him. And that's under the law. They, they had to do that. So, um, so basically, this whole story now has been totally just lied and distorted by, by Lasso's campaign. As I say, see, he was working for Moreno. You know, which is which is not which is a lie. He was not. He never. I, he was not a. Sorry to interrupt you, but I saw that the campaign, uh, the Arouse campaign uh, approach, or the Arouse campaign attacks uh, on Lasso were being successful. I'm talking. I'm talking about the things that I've seen on social media, like uh, saying that uh, Lasso is like the same thing as. As Moreno and that they work together and Lasso or Moreno are the same thing. I mean, I believe that they are focused part of the campaign on that issue. And I saw that it was a good thing. And also in recent days, uh, this scandal of Lasso's properties in Florida, I also that uh, had a, 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 an impact on Lasso's campaign. So you think that it's not that effective? No, I, I think that's all true. But the pro the thing is, is that when the thing to remember is that since 2017, when Moreno came into office and he did this betrayal of the whole movement, you have both the public media and the private media that's totally against uh, anything to do with Korea. You know, uh, they demonize Korea. The Korea is technically sentenced to jail uh, in Ecuador. They what they've done is they've showered. Uh, vilification and lawsuits and, and really trying to destroy, you know, the, the elected vice president of, of Ecuador who stayed loyal to in jail. He's been in jail since 2017. You know, they cooked up all these sham trials and and, and all this vilification in the, in the mass media. So what you understand is the mass media in Ecuador is totally against Correa, is totally against the Rouse. 
uh, or else was barely able to uh, register a, a campaign at all. In fact, it, it's really shocking. A lot of people don't understand is that he, they really don't even have a political party uh, because in 2017, uh, they, uh, Correa and his allies, when they realized what a traitor uh, Moreno was, they actually expelled um, Moreno from was the, the party that Correa founded, Alianza País. Uh, but Correa, uh, Moreno was able to use his control of the of the judges, the electoral authorities, to basically squash that, seize control of the party. So Correa's Correa's top leaders and 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 the popular uh, and his supporters basically left that party and tried to register their own and have never been allowed to do so. So the way they're running, they, they ran in the campaign in 2019, the way that in the local elections and the way they're running in this campaign is by, by joining already existing parties that they negotiated deals to be able to, to join in order to participate at all. So they really don't, I mean, even though they've just like, as the numbers you just indicated, they won the first round of the presidential election. They have the largest represent, representation in the parliament, but really they don't even have their, their uh, officially their own party. You know, yeah. so that just shows you the level of, of persecution and also along with that media bias. So when you consider that media bias, you know, it's always any attack on a rose is going to get kind of it, in the Ecuadorian media is going to have that advantage. You know what I mean, so any, you know, a rose has to go on, on private TV channels that are already hostile to them and try to explain the, the truth about these distortions that uh, Guillermo Lasso has spread in a way that Lasso is not is not going to have to defend himself. He's 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 got he's got that advantage, the media advantage, you know. So yeah. so yeah, yeah, I mean, if you follow the the, the, the the social media, let's say of Arosa supporters, it looks like yeah yeah you know how can how could Lasso even have a chance? But you have to take into account that the big private media in, in Ecuador is very has spent four years. Don't worry. <laughs> Lenin, Lenin fall. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> they spent uh, they spent four years vilifying Croatia, trying doing everything, doing everything they can to to uh, to vilify uh, anything to do with Korea, with Korea's movement. So so that's that's the uh, the inclined field that uh, Arouse is working against. You know, so so I think that that that's why uh, an attack, even it seems trivial, it seems. Uh, you know, when you look at it, but it's, again, you have to take time to explain it. And you have a media that's going to go out of its way to make you look shifty, to make like, but oh, the, look at the at, at, trying to at the end of the day, you see that, that 5% accurate, right? Or, or, or? Well, some of the pollsters are very biased. Like, like Sedatos, some of the, like Sedatos especially is notorious for being, uh, for cooking up uh, polls uh, that are, that are that prove out to be long, and all they're trying to do is just fire up, is fire up their side. You know, they're, they're more like propagandists than real pollsters. I, I think in, in in Venezuela, I know there's one. I believe they're called Mega Analysis. You know, they, they yeah. put out these. Not analysis. Not analysis. Not that analysis. analysis. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was pretty yeah. bad. But there's another one that's even worse. That's aligned with Maria Corina Machado. I forget the name of the poll. I think it's called Mega Analysis. They're they're yeah, even crazier maybe. than that. Yeah. Oh, they're terrible. So. So in Ecuador, same kind of thing. You have some pollsters that are really shifty. So that the five, but I don't know. I, I the the analysis I gave you is based on weighting the average of the pollsters. So the five percent might be accurate. We'll have to see for sure on the on the election. They will know. But yeah, uh, I, I believe that what you say about the polls is absolutely accurate, uh, taking into consideration the results in the pre, in the first round, right? Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. no one was talking about Jaco Perez. No one was talking about the other guy that came in fourth place. So, so it's kind of crazy. Yeah. So, a anything yeah. might happen. Sure. And if you look at Sedato, Sedato said that um, Arouse would get like 20, 21 percent in the first round, and he got thirty-three. You know, when you round up, thirty-three percent. I mean, that's huge. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, mm -hmm. not, that's not a small error. That's a huge error. So. So it's it's hard to say, but it's I think my my it's only my hunch is that the five percent the five points sounds reasonable. Could be more, could be a little. It sounds like he's leading, but uh, I'm concerned, frankly, because I think that uh, Lasso, with the help of the media, has has put Arouse a bit on the defensive in recent weeks, and I think Arouse has to to go That's find bad. a way to get back on the offensive again. That's bad, but let's hope that he wins. Everyone from the left is open, so right. Well, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, yeah, sorry, sorry. 
we can't, sometimes we can't confuse what we want with what we with the yes, date, with the date. I, know. Careful. I know i know i know i'm going to jump to the second question sure do you think split and resentment within correismo had an effect in the third round uh, or might have an effect on the second round i'm talking about the the, the decisions about choosing a rouse affecting people uh, within Correismo, and uh, because of that, uh, uh, there was this big split in the first round. I mean, with four important uh, candidates being with important percentage of the votes. I, I don't think there's a split so much within Correismo because I think the split, the betrayal that happened in 2017, already already at that time it was clear who the real Correarists were the whole time and who was false, you know. So the, the people who were false, basically they, they revealed themselves right away. So I don't think the core leadership or, or the key supporters of, of Correismo are, are very divided, but there is, a, a, in the broader left, there are divisions, you know, because there were, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a conflict, um, you know, with Korea's government, uh, they want to reduce poverty, they want to, uh, you know, try to develop the country, develop it in a way so that they're not, uh, they can go forward, you know, develop better infrastructure, a better educational system, make basic improvements that allow them to, to move out of poverty. But that puts them, in, you know, to do that, they need to ex to uh, to export natural resources, you know, the oil uh, yeah. and, and do mining, and that and that puts them in conflict uh, sometimes with with indigenous communities that uh, traditionally have always borne the cost. You know, the costs of all that activity go to them, and the benefits go elsewhere. So even though Korea, uh, I, I think, did turn that around, uh, and he did relieve poverty and all things, but there's still a tension because there are people who say, well, no, he needed to do Uh, you know, you need to to uh, go slower, consult more. Uh, you know, and, and so there's there's a tension there that created that opened up uh, sincere divisions, shall we say, and also opportunities for 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 op uh, opportunists to step in. And let me just yeah. say, Jacob yeah, Paris, uh, I think if you look at his records, uh, is one of the opportunists. Uh, yeah, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of foreign money, foreign NGOs that that wants to create those divisions in the broader left. You know, and they create them around what they call extractivism. They create them around certain identity issues. Uh, you know, whatever they can find a way to to divide the left. So there's, in the broader left, I would say there's divisions that have that have uh, uh, weakened the rouse and would explain why he wouldn't just win in the first round. Uh, on the other, hand, but I think the bigger explanation is just the political persecution of the last four years. Like I mentioned earlier, they don't even have their own political party. They have a, a lead, leaders either in jail or in exile. Uh, you know, not just top leaders, but also other officials who were you know, targeted and lives destroyed. So, so there's a, those kind of factors I think are, are perhaps more mm -hmm. important. So you're saying this more, 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 I mean, had a bigger impact in the results in the first round at least that tension uh, of the extractivism and development policies with indigenous groups and uh, and the, of course the lawfare the the, politi the 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 legal political persecution against Correa and his people right that makes right. sense it's sure it's all those factors but i think the biggest one really is the the persecution because uh, mm -hmm. because the persecution goes hand in hand with the media climate That that's really hostile, very against it. So it's a very playing on a very uh, lopsided field. That's field that's tilted against them. So that's something we sh we shouldn't forget. You know, if a rouse wins, then you know the, at least you'll have public media. You can you'll see things turn around. Now that it won't be so easy for the traditional power brokers in Ecuador to just you know bombard people with uh, with all this one-sided information. I, th I think something similar. I think probably happened in, in Bolivia. You know. Where yeah. during the Anya, Anya's was in power. I mean, where do you? I mean, it's very hard to to get to get a pro mass point of view. But then when yeah. that was over, yeah. now now things turn around, you know. But so hopefully That's things true. will turn yeah, can turn around. That's true. Let me jump to the third question now. Do you expect Arauz to be able to bring Pachacutic base to his side for a second run purpose, but also for? Parliamentarian, parliamentarian life taking into consideration the how split is the parliament 
I believe yeah. that somehow you already answered that question with the previous one, but anyway, I believe that. Uh, well, yeah, Arouse has definitely reached out and received support from certain indigenous groups. There's the Shuar group that comes to mind, uh, a Shuar federation that already endorsed him. Uh, there's there's uh, other other you know regional indigenous groups that have endorsed Arouse. So Pachacutic is the is officially like the the uh, political uh, arm of the indigenous movement. The indigenous movement itself is, is very is very fragmented. You know, you have guys like Yaku Perez who are very right wing, and uh, then you have you have people who are who stood solidly behind Korea for ten years, who are also part of the movement. So it's very fractured. The base itself, I think, he can win the base. I, I in the parliament now because they made changes to the parliament specifically to make sure that it would be much harder to get a majority. So because they could try to hamper uh, the executive from being able to do anything. And they're still making, I mean, Borrell's uh, trying to privatize the central bank before on his way out, before he leaves the office. So there's different things he's already trying to do to try to hamper uh, the, uh, the, the, the next government, if it, especially if it's a left government like with, uh, under Rouse, from being able to reverse the, the right wing program of the last four years. So it's going to be the challenge for Arouse. I think to win parliament, he's going to have to mobilize the social movements to put pressure on those guys to back uh, progressive proposals in parliament. He's going to have to, first of all, make, obviously make those progressive proposals and also mobilize uh, social movements to pressure the parliamentarians uh, to go along with them, right? So that's going to be a challenge because um, under Correa's, the rules were different under Correa's time in office. Uh, with the vote that Aliyah, with the vote that uh, his party received uh, in the first round, they would have had a majority. But now that's not the case. You know, they changed the rules so that it's, it's a more proportional representation. So now they're going to have to uh, they're going to have to uh, form broader coalitions, and that has dangers. You know, when you form, uh, you know, the way Korea won with broad coalitions, that's that's one of the reasons you get somebody like Moreno in the mix. You know, because you're trying to broaden your appeal, and then because you don't want to be overly pure, overly sectarian, and just stick to a small, pure group that agrees on 100%, right? You try to broaden your appeal, but then you bring in people who are often opportunistic. You know? So that's right. that's a danger. So basically what you, I'm trying to interpret it, what you are telling me is that that already at Aus got uh, some support from the basis of the Pachacuti, right? Yes, yes. Because some of the Pachacuti is diverse. Right. Yeah, the base definitely the base. Mm -hmm. of the, it's it, the indigenous movement is diverse, and so there there's there's definitely opportunities for him. And Korea also, you know, Korea wanted to go fast, and, and there is some element of truth that maybe he could have been a little more diplomatic, uh, or or uh, in uh, in his approach, maybe maybe there was perhaps I mean some of his uh, supporters even say maybe he should have been a little more. Uh, Willing to bend on some issues with, with the indigenous movement, but uh, honestly, when I when I look at it, I see I see it mainly. I think there there's a very destructive uh, element of the foreign NGOs a lot of times that, like I said earlier, seeks to exploit divisions uh, because there's some very reactionary postures that the, a lot of these leaders took while Korea was off and and while Korea was off in Venezuela. With yeah, those guys yeah. talking about the Arco Minero. That kind mm. of stuff. Yeah. Sometimes from the extreme left. Yeah, and, and sometimes it's hard to tell what what's sincere and what's opportunism. You know, some, sometimes it's hard to tell. Is yeah, this guy serious? Is he just? Yeah, it's hard. It's hard sometimes. Yeah. But so because of your answer, my I, I'm wondering right now what was the strategy of arouse in order to get more votes. In the second round, I mean, yeah. What do you think he did, or he has been doing lately, to try to change the the composition of the voting for the second round? I think I think part of it is, to be honest, I think he's been a little bit soft on talking about Korea or or defending Korea's time in office. That's true. I'm not that. I, I sense there's a bit of a softness there. Now it's it's not something that I like. I wish he would be even yeah, much more yeah. aggressive and stronger <laughs> in defending times up. But I don't. I mean, is it a smart thing to do politically? Maybe it is. We'll see. Yeah. 
because that if the, I mean there there's a strong base that loves Korea, but then there's other people. Yeah, so you, perhaps you broaden your appeal. But I mean the, the danger there is you can broaden your appeal again and maybe alienate some of your base mm -hmm. that you shouldn't, or maybe um, you know again bring in opportunist opportunist yeah. elements who then screw things up for you. Like you know so. It's, there's always trade-offs, but that, that's what I see. I see him trying to be more diplomatic, especially with the indigenous uh, movement. Like uh, one, one very uh, telling thing about this, for example, when uh, when Evo, Morella, Evo Morales was overthrown in um, in uh, in, uh, in Bolivia, Arauz, Arauz was working with uh, in Washington D.C. with a think tank that helped expose the lies of Almagro about the election. So when, uh, when uh, uh, Morales returned to Bolivia, he invited Arauz to speak at a rally. And when Arauz was there, so were other indigenous leaders from Ecuador. So he interacted with them there. So, and those were leaders who were not, uh, who were hostile to Korea. So it seemed to be like he was already, there were he was already exploring opportunities and maybe try to build bridges with some of the sectors who were, who were alienated by Korea before. Okay. So okay, that's we'll important. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Okay, so I'm gonna jump to the first question. Um, please share with us your thoughts on the effect of aroused victory or defeat in Latin America, but also in the world. Well, I, I think um, regionally it'll be a big it'll be a big blow if. Uh, First of all, to Ecuador, right? If if Lasso continues, Lasso will continue, uh, not only continue Moreno's policies, but he'll 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 deepen them, uh, you know, which is a very right wing agenda. Privatize as much as he can, uh, let let the you know capital fly out of the country, which in Ecuador's case is extremely dangerous because that is a dollarized economy, you know. So it, it can't it can't print its own currency. If the dollars leave, it's 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 stuck. You know, the only way you can make adjustments is by dropping wages. You know, and so it, it, they could they could provoke another kind of collapse in the economy, like they did. You know, uh, Lhasa was part of the government that in 1999 collapsed the entire banking system because they liberalized the banking rules. They let everything go so much that the whole banking system collapsed. So there's a big danger that he that of the destruction he'll do in Ecuador. Uh, regionally, he'll be uh, totally a puppet of the United States. He will be totally hostile to Venezuela. He will not, you know, he will be, again, the, the kind of Lima group kind of uh, uh, lackey of the United States. So that would be very destructive for the region. You know, and, and these people don't want regional integration. They just want to be uh, puppets of the United States. You know, they don't want Latin America. To, for them, they don't care if Latin America develops or not. They just they just want to be uh, puppets in the United States, and they're fine with that, you know, because as long as it serves their interests. You know? So, so that whereas with a rouse, a rouse is very strongly committed, and he talks about this a lot. Like he tries to tone down the association with 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 uh, Korea, but he talks all the time about how much how important it is for Latin America to integrate. You know, yeah. and, and and to integrate with respect, even with right wing governments, but to form a real uh, uh, work together yeah. so, they can, so that they can negotiate and and, and 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 basically get better deals from the from the far more powerful countries in in, in the United States, Europe, and elsewhere. You know, he, he really wants to he wants to have good relations with China. He wants to have alternatives. So he talks about that a great deal, even though he doesn't maybe put. Uh, you know, a hard Koreaist spin on it, but he talks a lot about regional integration. So yeah, that's true. That'll be huge for the region if Aros gets in, just for that region alone, because that it's, it'll be so important for for uh, for Latin America to develop if they can work together. You know, that's always yeah. that's it's been a huge problem. He has been talking about Unasur a lot and yeah. Celac, and Which was, it will be great because. Uh, when Chavez and, and 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 Lula and Fidel were alive, I mean Lula is alive, but were in power. I mean, uh, yeah. uh, uh, Unasur was a magnificent tool to deal with political problems within the region. 
disregarding the part that was politically diverse. But that doesn't mean that you cannot look for, you know, Latin American unity. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I yeah, that. And UNASUR was based in Quito, you know, yeah, and yeah. one of the very first things Moreno did was try to dismantle it, uh, basically try to destroy it. So that because that the, the the right wing that represented by people like Lasso, they don't want to have anything to do with that. They don't care about that. They just care about the United States. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and really, if you think about even if you're on the right, if you have any kind of nationalist uh, feeling at all, I mean, you have to want your country to be not to be a tool of anybody else, but to be able to, to work with others and stand on its own. You know, and so that's that's what a Rouse represents. And uh, so that, that would be huge for the region if he, if he wins. And, and it would be a huge setback if he doesn't. So it's it's an important election. Yes. So anyway, I, I, those were my four questions for you. So right now you're free to ask me one or two questions if you want uh, on any issues that you feel relevant for this elections or, or whatever issue that you like. How much is Ecuador coming up in, in Venezuela? I mean, how much is Maduro, is Maduro tried not to, to talk about it much, kind of try to stay out of it? Or, or Because as you know, when, whenever we have elections anywhere now, uh, the right tried to weaponize Venezuela yeah. against whoever the left candidate is. It, it's probably even true for Manchada it was, was it yes, but even yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And now that you mentioned that, uh, I believe that there is a difference between Chavez and Maduro in that respect. Chavez was outspoken and he did not like pay any, any consideration into what people or media or whomever will think about whatever he said. And, yeah. I, I, and I love that. One of the things that I love uh, about Chavez was that. But Maduro is different, and I understand Maduro in a way because they have been using Venezuela like the like the devil everywhere. Not only Latin America, in in a lot of countries, even outside the continent, they has been using Venezuela like the like the bad apple, the things that you want to become. Right, you right, don't want right. to to become uh, so things like that. And Maduro has been like very uh, and i i appreciate that uh, i see it positively i mean uh has been very a uh, caution about making a statement about elections in, uh, in general and i i'm just realizing that uh with that question that, with that comment that you raised because uh, he I, I it's true i haven't heard maduro saying too much about the elections uh in any country but in Ecuador neither but uh, of course during the days before the first round I believe that Maduro say make like one or two comments about uh, expecting Arauz to win or something like that but but uh, those were very small comments uh, and I believe that he do that on Porto to try not to uh, maybe let that be used to attack uh, the candidates that are sympathetic with Chavismo. You know what I mean? Oh, sure. So, yeah. so maybe that's the reason. Uh, but I believe that he is very, you know, in connection with uh, with the left movement, not only in Ecuador, but everywhere. But right. he tries to be canceled because we they have been, you know, demonizing him and Venezuela so much that... that uh, mm -hmm. I believe that he have decided to take a low profile or something like that. And of course, we have that too many problems right now in Venezuela, too many fronts of attacks right now in Venezuela that, that, that maybe he do not have time either to think too much or dedicate too much energy towards the, the regional, you know, political right. context. So, One thing, Arauz has been absolutely clear. He will not do anything stupid like recognize Juan Guaido. He's been totally clear. Like, I think you can understand he doesn't want to talk about Venezuela either, right? Uh, I don't think any candidate on the left, you know, I, they, they kind of want to avoid talking about Venezuela, just like Maduro wants to avoid talking about other elections, yeah. right? 
But when they've asked him and, and like say, well, look, I mean, we're not going to recognize, we don't believe Juan Guaido is the president of Venezuela. So he's been 100% clear about that. Yeah, yeah. I really and, what I hear him. And if you actually, if you, if you listen to Correa's interviews, I mean, he's even, he's even much stronger uh, yeah. on that because they'll say, oh, when you think about, uh, you know, Venezuelan migrants in Ecuador, and he says, well, Correa said just recently in an interview, well, imagine if uh, the United States didn't let us export our oil, didn't let us export our shrimps, what do you think is going to happen? We'd be all over the Americas too. You know, we'd have migrants all over the place too. So <laughs> he's, he's even, he takes a very, very hard line and, and, and does not, he's very strong, but mind you, he's not running for office. So he can, perhaps he has a little more liberty to, of course. Of course. Uh, to, to speak the truth. That's true. That's true. So, so I believe that. I mean, I, I'm happy with the things that I hear from 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 Arauz. I believe that he. I don't know. I feel more comfortable listening to him than, for example, listening to Alberto Fernandez in oh. Argentina. For example, I believe that he's too soft. He right. tries to be con Dios y con el diablo, as we say with the, how do you say yeah. that in English? With, with God yeah, and the devil? I don't know, is that a good translation? Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know if, they, if there's an equivalent, yeah, in English. I'm not sure what the equivalent, right? Yeah, but he's trying to, yeah, he's trying to walk a fine line between partiality and impartiality. There's no such line. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah. I see around like, like a good option in mm -hmm. Ecuador, and I associate him a lot with uh, with Luis Arce. I don't know why. I mean, I feel like I hope maybe that he uh, will behave like Arce, more, more straightforward without being a student. You know, Arce has been doing a lot of important things to try to, uh, uh, I mean, for example, immediately after he took office, he uh, reestablished relations with Venezuela, with Cuba, with, with other countries, and and uh, uh, he rejoined Alba, and and he has been pushing also towards regional integration, and he brought back the Cuban medical mission. I mean things like that that uh, that has been I mean decisions that have been taken, but that that do not um, I mean. I'm not being used to against him, uh, you know, because right. he has been doing too many other things. So I hope that uh, that at least in Ecuador, Arauz uh, would be able to do something like that if they allow him to do that, because it's going to be tough, at least especially in the parliament. Yeah, the parliament's going to be an issue. It's going to be an issue, uh, and I think he's going to want to focus on domestic policy, right? But uh, e even as a candidate, like I said, there's definitely just the fact that he's not going to be one of these Lima Group people. You know, he's going to he's he's going to recognize the legitimate government of, of Maduro. That that alone is is by itself very important. You know, uh, you know. It, so I, I think it's how you know. I hope, like a lot of people, I remember when uh, when Arce just got in. I, I had friends who went to Bolivia to do some reporting, and they were concerned. You know, oh, is this guy is. This, because they were concerned that maybe he would betray Morales or betray, because everyone, I think a lot of people have in their minds now the Lenny Moreno experience, yeah. you know, or the Almagro experience. A lot of people got traumatized with, with Moreno. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and Almagro, and Almagro, you know. But, uh, but, you know, and it didn't turn out, like you said, actually, time was, time, time was said, they, okay, he went through things cautiously, but he's not, he's not a traitor, you know, it's, it's different. You know, let's face it, we live in a world where we have a very dangerous superpower in the United States, and so the governments in the global south have to be somewhat careful, you know. Uh, now, but, now that you mentioned the U.S., and we have been keeping it out of the question, I remember that I read a few days ago an article, I believe it was Catuar Conada, or one of those important writers that talk about this meeting uh, of Moreno and U.S. military and diplomats in in Galapagos. Do you have information about that? I mean, do you think that's accurate? Do you read that article? 
I'm not sure about that article that you're mentioning about Galapagos. No, but uh, Moreno did meet with Almagro and um, and some other U.S. officials in Washington shortly before the first round. I mean, there could be lots of reasons. Could be trying to organize even his own um, his own exile because you know the the Truth Commission, the the uh, ombudsman, the Defensoria del Pueblo, they just came out with a big report about the repression of October of 2019. And, you know, Moreno, those guys were in big trouble for, for the assassination, torture, all the things they did. To, so, you know, um, you know, Paola, Maria Paola Romo, the, the interior minister who was presided over a lot, that she's in, uh, she's already in the United States. So there could be a lot of reasons to talk to the Americans to you know, negotiate his exit or whatever, you know. Uh, so there's 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 a lot of things that are going on. He's a very he's an incredibly cynical person, you know. Uh, so, but he's 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 accomplished a lot with uh, with because he's uh, had this whole media apparatus domestically and internationally covering for him, you know. Uh, so it, that could, that could come that'll come to a quick end if a rouse wins, you know. Suddenly the the media environment in Ecuador will change drastically right away. And people won't feel so isolated, uh, you know, from the from the official from the in the media. You know, they'll they'll hear more points of view. It won't be so easy to lie, you know, anymore. So you don't see too many moves from the U.S. side. Recent moves uh, from the U.S. Uh, towards this second round. Have you noticed something unusual coming from Washington or? Well, one thing Washington did, one thing Blinken did, is you know the. Um, <laughs> Ecuador's Attorney General uh, Salazar, I forget, I forget, Diana Salazar. Uh, they gave her an award. They, the United States gave her an award for anti-corruption, yeah. uh, which is because she's the one who who met with her Colombian counterpart, trying to yeah. trying to spread these uh, allegations about, trying to make them look credible. The allegations about Arauz and linking him to the ELN, and mm -hmm. she's been, she's been basically she was put there to be a tool of Moreno to prosecute whoever they want her to prosecute. And she, she's been, she's been uh, absolutely horrible. So this, I think, might be a signal of the United States trying to defend its people. Well, just like Agnes, right? Agnes was arrested. Some of her ministers were arrested for their crimes. Right away, what does the United States do? You know, they object, right? Say, hey, that's not acceptable. Yes, yes they're always, that's they're true. always looking. Do you Even think if something like that might happen in Ecuador with Moreno? You were, you were just talking about that, but might happen in Ecuador with Moreno. If Arauz wins, if Arauz wins, he's gonna be, he's he's gonna face, I'm sure he'll face some legal consequences. But Arauz will have to be careful because uh, you know, just like in Bolivia, you know, they didn't arrest Anya's right away. You know, they have to they have to try to follow things very carefully because mm -hmm. you know, you have the United States. You know, they can exert a lot of pressure. You know, and uh, so I think that's you know when you see this Diana Salazar getting an award from. United States. To be, I interpret that as a message, like, "Hey, don't don't mess with these people." You know, like there are people, don't you know? So I, I Rose is going to have to. If he wins, uh, they're going to have to do. They're going to have to hold those people accountable because if they don't, then they'll alienate the people, you know, the, including the indigenous movement that he wants to reach out to, because a lot of the oppressed uh, were, were from the indigenous movement. You know, so uh, yeah, it's going to be tricky. It's always tricky because uh, you know there's. The, the United States always wants the Latin America to apply the rule of law the way they, you know, they want to, they want to be the law, you know. Yes. So uh, that's that's a big problem. So, but I, I hope I hope he faces Khan. He's done so much. He's ruined. He's destroyed people's lives. He's done so much harm. He's, he's acted so it's such disrespect for the Constitution, for the for the law, for human rights. And I hope I hope he and his top people face uh, the consequence they should face under the law. You know, but unfortunately, the reality is that a country like Ecuador always has to take into account the, the big bully in the north and make sure that uh, they don't they don't end up suffering consequences just to try to enforce their own laws. Yes, yeah, that's true. Thank you, Joe, for oh, your you. for accepting our invitation for the interview. Oh. It was a pleasure talking to you. I hope that we can keep in touch and, and sure. keep working together, especially during the next week uh, that is going to be, I'm sure, pretty busy. <laughs> no, it's going to be stressful. I'm not going to feel comfortable until he wins. <laughs> Thanks very much.
Un abrazo, un abrazo. Stay with me, I'm gonna stop.